Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV blog. And I'm Kathy Joseph from Kathy Loves Physics. Hey, welcome back, Kathy. How I'm long's so it been? Excited is it a be year? Back. Is it hmm? a year? Has it been a I, year I or? I think so. Wow. I'd say, uh, yes, a year ago, says Yay. you. Yay. <laughs> there you go. Every year, we'll make it a yearly thing. Okay. I, so. I, I love that. Faraday had a Christmas tradition. We can have a ah. Halloween. It's scary. Oh, we, no, I don't do Halloween. No, that's an Australian. Oh. No, no, Halloween. Oh, no, oh, oh. no Australia. that's a big contention here in Australia. No, because oh. we're getting infested with all this Americanism, you see. So we're oh, trying I to see. avoid Halloween. But, yep. but, but you can have <laughs> an early November, late October, like, discuss instead a replacement no one's dressing up as anything we're just i'm just cracking you up and messing up your entire show great that is that's their, what we're here that for. is your tradition that is how you get scared <laughs> by an american maybe we can wear like lab coats we can wear, wear like ESC no 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 no, no we're no, dressed no, no. like our usual right. slobs i think i saw your shirt you're wearing um it's no I'm, I'm i'm just a no it's a Too it's great. a True grit. Yes, it's an obstacle race thing. It's an obstacle <gasps> racing. See, now um, that's perfect. And I'm wearing why? a t-shirt that I found. Excellent. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. I think that's appropriate. I'm dressed I was going to wear business. something, but it's, but it's actually cropped off on the shot anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> perfect. I'm dressed as a physicist. Physicists hey, right. dress however they want. And engineers dress however they want. Yes. Yes. perfect. Yes. A uh, tie is a noose for an engineer. That's, oh my god! You know, Are you kidding? E e e except in the fifty, like except in the fifties and sixties and stuff, where you know everyone wore a tie. You know, you were like, yep. Of Philo T. Farnsworth, who came up with the television, got a job. So he made the television in my hometown of San Francisco. And I don't know if I told you this story. No, no, no tell you, us, please. Let's. That's okay, what we're here. So You're what? a storyteller. You're a his, his, historian, that's technical what I am. storyteller. Let's go. It's, I am we a haven't even introduced physicist. you. Okay, we, we haven't even. But everyone, you've got the book, uh, the, the Lightning Tamers. But that's the whole. So we did. We covered that book in the last video, and we covered all sorts of stuff. So listen to that part one. So we're going to okay. carry on from that. But anyway, your story. Part go. two. We're going to talk about. This is going to go in my book. My third book. So like, you don't have to wait forever for it. So I should tell the story now about yes. Philo T. Farnsworth, the farm boy who came up with television because you will love this. So he was a boy, he was born in Utah because he had a Mormon, he's Mormon family. Mm -hmm. And they went on a covered wagon to like, I'm going to say Montana and I'm going to be wrong and I don't <laughs> care. <Okay. laughs> but he was a kid and their new house had two precious gifts in it. The first thing was it had a generator and the Ooh. generator always broke. So of course he got to take it apart and put it together and take it apart and put it together. And then pretty soon his sister was like, there were no watches. There were no anything, anything with parts was taken apart <laughs> and put together. And sometimes it was better. And sometimes they never saw the watch again <laughs> because that's who he was. The it's very familiar. With the attic was filled with kids magazines that someone had left as kids popular science magazines right so all he did was read all these kids science magazines and take apart thing and take apart their tractor and put it together and blah 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 blah. so he goes to high school and he convinces the chemistry teacher that even though he's a freshman he should be taking senior chemistry which is the only science class they have <laughs> right. and tutor him after school. So he's reading all these magazines and in it, they're talking about how they try to make a electronic fax. Like you would shine light through these yep. little holes that you spun and it would go onto this material that would respond electronically to the light. Um, yep. And that would change into an electric signal that would be sent wirelessly and then you would recreate the uh, you re reproduce it at the other end there were quite a few people who did something like that isn't there i think yeah yeah, yeah. there was very popular this was like oh it know, was a thing okay it was a there were heaps it was of people a thing doing, that they right. had managed to do but it wasn't right. really 
it was so crude that you're like, great. I got a piece of, you know, this incredibly yeah, yeah. fuzzy image. Yeah. Wonderful. Like, it's not really useful. No, but it, so but, it, but, it, but it did but what it was, you expected, even in right, a right, right. It was a it's, precursor. And yeah. in it, there was a lot of complaints that, like, there was a limit to how much you could send. Right. With the the image, it took a long time to get, you know, if you got too small and blah, 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 blah. And at the same time, there's articles about the cathode ray tube. Because, mm. of course, there's article books about the cathode ray tube. Yes. There's actually people in Germany, I think. No, Russia. People in Russia who had done something with a cathode ray tube scanning or like getting the image with moving the dots yep but the problem was that no one could figure out how to get all of these dots in a coherent way to get it from one thing to another right and so he's he's working the fields on a freaking horse looking <laughs> up these wheat fields i think it's wheat it's in my head as wheat so it's going down as right wheat. this wheat okay <laughs> so it be, shall be for all time. Yeah, well, someone can look up a book on Felix. This is off the top of my head, and I did not prepare. So if the details That's are right. wrong, That's all right. you are going to put up with it. Um, it's not my fault. It's not on purpose. Anyway, wheat fields. he's on this horse looking at these fields of wheat, and they're in rows. And it mm. looks like an image with the wind blowing on them. Oh. It looks like a moving image. Right. And he goes, I have it. I have it. We don't need dots. We need rows. Right. We need rows, rows of, of images. Yeah. And that's how the data, it will look like a full picture if we just have rows of bright and dark and you can control the movement of the cathode ray with electromagnets. Yes. It's move and and you can include change the intensity of it with the strength of the voltage in front of the tube. Mm -hmm. You can make it brighter and darker. Oh, and, and then darker. you can yep. control the image you make and you can control the image you get. You made television. So he goes on his horse <laughs> to the see the teacher. He puts all this stuff on the board. The teacher comes in and he says I made it. I made an electric, all electric television. And his teacher goes, um, um, what's that? <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing? Did he even use the word television back then? Cause he, yes, he that, that was actually a term or, that was or a did term. he invent it? It was created by Alexander Graham Bell. Alexander right. Graham Bell was the grandson oh, that's and son right. of linguists. And like famous linguists, like remember my fair lady? Oh, I, I know of it, but... I, okay, yeah, In My no. Fair Lady, it's about <laughs> a mean linguist. And it was based on a book, uh, sorry, a play called Pygmalion, which was partially based on Alexander Graham Bell's grandfather who's, and father, who were cranky right. linguists, <laughs> snotty linguists, I guess. And so anyway, he came up with the term telephone and television and all sorts of things. Because he wanted to do this, it just he didn't get anywhere. <laughs> You're right. Well, he got kind. He did something that was sort of something, but it it never went and, anywhere. So yeah. they did have the term television. So he legit said, "I've made an all electric television," and his and his teacher said, "This is great. I think I have no idea what you're doing, but it looks good." <laughs> That's right. That's right. Cause, because they, they had mechanical televisions before that, yes. didn't they? Hey, yes, that's yes. right. They had of mechanical television televisions. with those little yes, you know, with the little slots little in the or something or the little holes in them, and, and yeah, they got and, better by the thirties, I think, or twenties. Right. Yeah, 20s. something like that. This and is all electric went. television. Okay. So so what did CR? You, you said the uh, CRT tube was around then. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It the, was around. It was a thing. So, what were they doing with CRT tubes? Was it just an oh, oscilloscope thing? Or no, was it, no. The, the what was the first use after? So, the first thing they did with it was it was eighteen fifties, I think. There was this guy in Germany named Plucker, 
Professor Professor Plucker. Professor Plucker. Professor and Professor Plucker, Plucker had a friend <laughs> in France named Rumcorf. And Rumcorf had made this coil, induction coil machine that could make a really, really, really big voltage, a really big spark. Mm. And Plucker said, hey, what happens if I put that really high voltage on a vacuum tube filled with a little bit of gas? Because, Obviously, right? <laughs> uh, well, no, because in um, like uh, in the time of like Benjamin Franklin mm. had a rival named um, Abbe Nollet, and Nollet would do these crazy experiments for the King of France, including taking tubes, evacuating it, putting in a little gas and putting it on a static electricity machine and letting it glow and putting your hands on it. Sort of like, um, you know, those balls. Uh, the, uh, plasma ball things. Yeah, they like are uh, plasma, plasma ball things. Exactly, yeah. like plasma ball things. So Plucker knew his history and he's right. like, oh, I'll get a plasma ball thing, but with high voltage. So ah. he goes to the glass maker named Geisler. If you've ever heard of a Geisler tube. Anyway. Oh, Geisler. yes. I think, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Geisler made this tube because it's not easy to make a glass tube evacuate, blah, blah, blah. He puts the voltage on there and it glow. He says it was indescribably beautiful. Hmm. But, and Geisler's like, yes, it is. I'm going to make a job out of this. I'm going to sell them to novelty shops and make and some novelty money. shops. And that's what he did. It was like early <laughs> neon light. And these right. things are gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Um, you can look it up geisler tubes and there's these intricate like they have they made these like paintings oh yeah them. oh they are beautiful they I'm looking are at that now so sexy oh. I like it. it's just like they're not neon lights they're works of art yeah they're and they put yeah art. and they put twists and turns in them and they got bulbs at each end and they can form them in different right. shapes and, and they found that if you added like phosphorescent materials in there then they would glow more inside there. So it became a big thing. And Plucker figured out if you put a magnet near it, you bent the light. You bent it. So he's like, right. wait a minute, how do you bend light? What the hell is this thing? But then it, it just sat there doing nothing else. And then right. like 10 years later, he had a student, a former student who was playing with vacuum tubes and realized his vacuum pump, sorry, vacuum pump, would form bubbles. And he's like, well, that's a really crappy vacuum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and then he realized he needed to chemically treat the glass because oh. it had water in the glass. And this is where the phosphor coating comes from. Is, is do, it? Do vacuum tubes have, no, you mean on the side? No, I, no, no. This no, I, I thought you on the inside. Okay. No, no, that came from Edison. Oh, um, okay. Oh, right. We're, we're not there yet. Oh, so, God. Oh, it's so I'm, I'm it's glad you so know the history. <laughs> the thing about physics is to me, when you tell the story of physics, it's almost like a musical. It's like incompre... Incompre... Blah, blah, blah. You cannot believe how freaking complicated Incomprehensible. It yes. Parts. <laughs> and then when it comes together, it's this weird story where everyone's like, hey, it worked out. And then we put on a play and it, here's the television. <laughs> That's how I think of it. I'm obsessed with musicals. So it kind of worked right. out in my brain right. that way. Because, you know, <clears throat> there are no physicists with normal brains. That yeah. would be, that would be wrong. That they're not a physicist. If, if you ever meet one who like seems totally normal. Yep. That, that's, they're probably they're not, not a, a very good physicist. <laughs> no, the same with engineers. If you're like, oh, I met that engineer and they seemed really, really, really normal, a little dull. Yeah, no, like, no, nope, no, nope, like, nope, yeah. nope, nope, nope. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so, so then we get the other person whose name was Hittorf. Hittorf was this shy guy. He figures out the vacuum pump wasn't working well, so he fixes it. And once he evacuates it more, he realizes that it doesn't glow, but the the little pieces of phos phosphorescence inside glow, and one wall glows, and it's the wall opposite the negative electrode. Right. And when he makes it in different shapes, he can even put a little cross in there, and he can see a shadow.
So he's like, it's coming from one side. And since Faraday defined the cathode as where the electricity comes from, mm -hmm. which they thought was positive, but this one was negative. They're like, this is a cathode ray tube. Ah, interesting. I never thought, yeah, I never even like thought of how did that term come about? Right, that's where it came from. And then well, the it, it, like, like it always made sense because it was like cathode and rays and like a bit. I never right, right. like when you get into and, the history of it, it's like. And now we're right. messed up, of course, because the cathode ray tube, the negative is the cathode, but yeah. the battery, the positive is cathode, unless you're recharging it, in which case the negative is the electrode. And then right. everyone's like, "F you! Why, <laughs> why are we doing this this way?" So is this oh, how yeah. they discovered that? electron flow was the other way like yes, it this was is how we discovered the electron right get ready get ready get ready it's oh, coming. oh my okay. mind's about to explode okay your mind is about to explode okay so <laughs> there was this guy in england and his name was crooks a c-r-o-o-k-e-s and he was a character so large larger than life he has a story he's from this family of like 12 kids and all he did was chemical experiments. He said the house always smelled terrible. And everyone was like, this lunatic is going to burn us down or poison us. <laughs> Nobody knew what to do with this guy. This and later great. on in life, you have to look up his picture because he has the world's best mustache. It like, I saw a cartoon of the man and I'm like, oh, ha ha ha. And then I saw a picture and like, he must have turned his head sideways to go through the door. And yep. William Cr I mean, I, I, I don't know. I'm a big fan of mustache. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, yep. Because everyone yep. looks the same. I'm trying to memorize thousands of people. And <laughs> right. if you have a good mustache. It's, man, it's a pencil I, I thin. That. That, yep. Yeah, it's like an evil mustache, but it's just gone past. It's Salvador Dali type. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Beyond the beyond. I right. love William Crooks. William yep. Cripps was a, a, a delight, spent much of his time as the head of every science department and every department to look for ghosts at the same time. Mm. He was just like, he did, did whatever the hell he wanted and he wanted to do whatever. So anyway, he learns about spectroscopy, looking at different lights to figure out what chemicals are, discovers new chemicals, gets obsessed with light, he makes that little thing where it's like um, you have black, um, it, like a little flags and four flags. One side is red, white and one side is black and it's in a little vacuum mm. light bulb and you put in the sunlight and it spins one way. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. I know that. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, it, like it's, it's a sun, is it a sun vein or something? It's like something it's vein. Like a it's sun like a vein. light yeah, vein. It's, is, is it's it a, a light physics vein? toy. Yeah. Right. He made this physics toy to show about the energy of light because he felt like that was part of his toy. Mm. And yeah. when he heard about the vacuum tube and the, you know, thing, he's like, oh, it's a fourth state of matter. matter. It's light that you can move with a magnet. It has ah. weight. It has charge. It's amazing. And he's like, he didn't think it was a subatomic particle. He thought it was new set, you know, solid, I, liquid, gas, gas and, cathode and ray. this thing, right. <laughs> right, 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 right. But he did all this crazy stuff to prove it. He made this like little paddle wheel in it. And then he'd shine the cathode ray and the paddle wheel would move down the inside the tube. He had this assistant who was this mechanic extraordinaire. And he kept on leaving the little notes like, you can do it. I know you can do it. <laughs> I'm sure he was doing that because he was asking for impossible, impossible bills. Right. No one is that nice to their mechanic unless no. they are asking for <laughs> the impossible. <laughs> and he would give oh, these boy. talks and people, he would get notes and like his friends would write him like, everyone is talking about what you said. He actually gave this big speech in 1900, like we need to make um, nitrogen fertilizer or everyone will starve. Mm -hmm. And and it started the third law of thermodynamics and nitrogen fertilizer and all sorts of good things and bad things. Right. And it was very, very influential. But anyway, he had this whole big thing. And meanwhile, in Germany, 
there was a young man named Heinrich Hertz. You might have heard of him. Might have heard of him. I, I don't know. Kind of rings a bell. <laughs> kind of rings a bell. Anyway, Hertz's boss had told him to do an experiment to prove Maxwell Faraday's experiment, uh, equations, like to prove that mm. light is an electromagnetic wave. Yes. And he wrote back and said, no, it's too hard. I can't do it. I'm going to play with vacuum tubes instead. <laughs> like, no. Much more fun. You, you, no, that's impossible. No, 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 no. So instead he plays with these vacuum tubes. He's like, okay, if it's a charged part, uh, not charged particle, a charged new form of mass, it should move if you put positive and negative plates. Mm -hmm. So we put positive and negative plates mm -hmm. in there. Plates. Nothing yep. happened. Didn't move. Ah. He's like, this is clearly a type of light. It's a new magic type of light that you can move with the magnet. So he publishes this. He's doing pretty well. He's still like, his his wife published his diary after he died. And, and not to be mean because he was so famous and he died so young. And his diary entries are all like, did nothing all day. <laughs> still a failure. Oh, no. <laughs> this year ended. So oh, glad. No. This everything was terrible. Hope next year is better. Like oh, everyone goodness. is like that. Like wow. I learned nothing. I know nothing. I'm a fool. I'm like, oh, I appreciate her so much. This is hurts. I know, right? It fits his name. <laughs> oh my god. Plus, plus, if you've ever been in everyone has been in that situation. Yeah, yeah. And it's so inspiring. It's so wonderful. Like that is the that's why she published his diary. She's like, right. hey, have you ever had years where every day is like, no, <laughs> yep. no, 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 no. Well, I've achieved guess nothing. What? <laughs> <laughs> My husband did it worse. So anyway, <laughs> when he met his fiance, he was showing her around the lab and he was inspired that a spark from one of these induction coils could create mm -hmm. a spark somewhere else. Right. And his boss had figured out that if you put a condenser or capacitor on these induction coils, which they had known about before, mm -hmm. it made an alternating wave that a very high frequency, a pulse yep. of alternating waves. So tank circuit. It's a tank circuit, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So but Helmholtz had come up with the equation for the tank circuit. Right. That was his boss. And he's like, oh. Well, these are vibrating way slower than visible light, mm. but maybe they're forming a form of invisible light. So he's like, mm. okay, I'm going to take the induction coil with the tank circuit and I'm going to put everything on it I can think of. Maybe long sticks do well. Maybe giant balls do well. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just putting everything on this thing. Right. And then he's like, okay, well, how do I catch the spark? He had a, first he had a, a square and then he changed it to a circle. He had a circle with a tiny little gap in it. And he's like, okay, we'll put a giant spark on one side and we'll catch it in the tiny spark on the other side. And right. I will see how strong the signal is by the size of the spark. Ah. And he's describing it. He's like, you have to see it in pitch dark your eye can, it's a barely a millimeter. I mean, like his description of it is so poetic. Like your eyes you have to be used to the dark. It's yeah. barely perceptible. And it's, it's almost like it isn't there, but it is. It is right. You could and almost then, imagine it. If you, you could almost uh, like think you see it, but it's not actually there. It's right, actually, right. And yeah, you could possibly like see it yeah. and then it's not there. there it's right. or, or, or it could be like, who was it uh, who saw the line? Was it Herschel who saw the lines, who saw the Mars uh, canals? He, uh -huh. you know, he said, just peered through the telescope and he, he wrote all these, he got famous because he saw all these canals on Mars. There must right, be right, life yeah, and civilizations. Like... It turned out it was the veins on the back of his eyeball or something that were the, that what that, that's what he was seeing. He oh was in the dark God. for yeah, so long. <laughs> he was seeing the veins on the back of his eyes, apparently. Oh, that's like... <laughs> that is so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is why I'm not an experimentalist. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> seriously, like... I see little wiggle lines in front of my eyes all the time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. 
Yep. I've 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 got um scintillating sacoma, I think it's called, and occasionally you'll get these people call them floaters, but it's a different thing. It's like a zigzag line. It'll just appear for like ten minutes. Sometimes I get Yeah, yeah, I think I think it's scintillating sacoma. I think that's the the technical term. I don't know. So yeah, that's the yeah. yeah. Right, we're seeing things. Okay. Terrible. So anyway, um what was I saying? So he does that and oh he also figures out a couple more things. One it reflects radio waves reflect so he can make a standing wave and right. by making a standing wave he could figure out where the nodes were where the signal got to zero and use that oh. to find the wavelength wavelength of the, light. of the light right and he knew the frequency of the light so he could yep. prove the radio waves move at the speed, speed of light, light. light. Ah. wow and he also awesome. did one experiment and he's like, I'm so sick of this bright light from the initial spark. Mm. So he's like, why don't I cover it? I'm doing the radio waves. I'll just cover the spark. And when he covered the spark, the signal went down considerably. What did he's he like, cover it with? Like, um, I don't know. But then he right. changed it to covering it with, he says, what if I put glass there? He put mm. glass there, it still dimmed it considerably. But he put quartz there and it didn't. Oh. And he realized that he was the um, ultraviolet light that was having an effect. And this is called oh. the photoelectric Electric effect. Effect, right. Which um, he, I, Einstein won his uh, Nobel Prize for the photoelectric right. effect, didn't he? Uh, yes, well, for his did, research the on the photo effect. No. Actually, right. it was Hertz's lab assistant, a guy named Philip Leonard, who developed it. And then Philip right. Leonard turned into this giant, giant Nazi, like publishing <laughs> right. articles like Hitler is a gift from the God, mostly because <laughs> oh, he got pissed at jealous of Einstein. Being <laughs> right. <famous. laughs> Uh, oops. So this was much later. This was much, okay. much, much later. Sorry, right. I'm ahead of myself. So yeah, yeah. Hertz discovers radio waves. He goes to England to get big awards. Guess who he meets there? William yeah. Crooks with the giant mustache. Giant. <laughs> and William Crooks says, you are so wrong about the cathode ray tube. It is clearly a part of thing. You're doing something wrong. And he's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> goes back to German. <laughs> He's like, okay, I'm going to do some more experiments on the cathode ray tube because clearly the mustache man is wrong, 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 wrong. So one of the <laughs> things that Crooks did is he had a cathode ray tube focus on a piece of platinum and heat it up. What Hertz did was have it non-focused and go on a very, very thin piece of metal so that he would see what happened when it hit something. I don't know what his logic was. But that's what he decided to do, what Hertz decided mm-hmm. to do. And what Hertz found was that it would, it was such a thin piece of gold or whatever, because usually they like gold because you can make it as thin as possible. Yeah, you can. Yep. Yeah. And not, and if you have the money and <laughs> yeah. it would glow a little bit through the piece of gold, but All if right. the gold had little folds in it, it would get darker. You could see the shadows of the folds in the gold. Mm. And he found that if you put little pieces of things there, it would make a shadow. It would go through the piece of gold without breaking the gold. Right. And Hertz is like, okay, 100%, this is light. Only light can go through something and not break it, right? 100% light. But also, this is really cool because we can make a little window of a very, very thin piece of aluminum or something Mm -hmm. and then have the cathode ray go through it into a chamber with a different amount of, um, you know, different vacuum because they didn't work unless if the vacuum was too good, it didn't work. If it was too good, it didn't work. Yeah, if it was too good, it wouldn't work. And they didn't know why. And right. I'll explain okay, uh, it, we, we're getting there. All right. Well, it didn't work if the vacuum was too good because they didn't know to heat 
the cathode. Cathode. Ah, you okay. needed a way right. for the electrons to, come off to the actually boil off. They have to be. Yeah, right. They but they didn't be. know that. Right. So they right. they need a little bit of air in there. So he came up with that idea, but he was getting sick. So he gave it to his student, Philip Leonard. And Philip, um, he was like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll just have a cathode ray tube and put a little aluminum window on the end and have the cathode go into the air. Instead of going ah. into a perfect vacuum, I'll have it go right. in the air. And he oh, holds up okay. a, a phosphorescent thing and he coats the whole side of the cathode ray tube because you don't want anything glowing except right. through the window. And he holds up his phosphorescent screen and it glows inches, uh, millimeters away from it, not on the surface, a little bit of distance. He's like, ha ha, I have 100% proved the cathode rays are a ray of light because it goes through right. a window and it goes <laughs> right. Different. It's yeah, yeah. And then Hertz dies. And Philip Leonard gets busy, you know, traveling all around to try to publish his work and to promote him. He doesn't get a job, blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, another guy in Germany named um, Röntgen. Uh, what was his first name? Röntgen. Uh, I can't remember his first name. It'll come to me. Be, oh, don't look him up. Don't look him up. Oh, I'm surprised. Did you look him up? I'm, I'm getting pumpkins. Wilhelm oh, okay. yeah, yeah, Röntgen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, oh, don't look him up yet. No, don't look okay. him up yet. Okay, Rankin, he's like, I'm really interested in this. So he builds a whole bunch of tubes, Crookes tubes and Hittorf tubes and Leonard tubes. And he takes a Leonard tube, coated, and he takes a phosphorescent screen made of heavy material instead of light material. Hmm. I'm not even sure if it was on purpose. It might have just been like, that's what he had. And he turns on the, the machine and the screen glows on the side. It glows through everything they coated it. He right. holds it in front of the metal part, the metal window. It glows brightly. He starts <laughs> picking up stuff. He has, I mean, like his paper is like a deck of cards, a piece <laughs> of wood, a 300 page book. I mean, clearly he just <laughs> picking up everything he has, yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> holding it in front of it. And it's making this shadow. Or it's sometimes a shadow around it, and then it goes through the material, it goes through a 300 page right. book. It goes through right. it's the most powerful ray he's ever seen. And he picks up a piece of a round, small piece of lead, and he's holding mm. up this piece of lead and waiting and waiting and waiting for the light to go through the lead. And as the light goes through, as he's waiting, he starts to see the light go through his hair, mm -hmm. but it doesn't go through his bones. bones. Yes. <laughs> he starts to see the shadows of the bones in his own hair. Awesome. And he goes home and he says, I'm working on something that's going to make everyone say, Rankin has gone completely mad. <laughs> yeah, because that would be... Yeah, imagine saying that you could see inside the human body or something like that. You could see a skeleton inside. It, this would be ghost levels exactly. of, of like witchcraft. That's exactly what happens. So he works in secret. He's an amateur photographer. So he sees if it will develop film while right. it's wrapped up, and it does. So yeah. he invites his wife into the lab, hold her <laughs> hand there for like 30 minutes because it's a really oh. weak x ray. And oh, so weak. She okay. hand for right. 30 minutes. Okay. And then they develop it. And supposedly she literally, she just screams and says, I've seen my own death and yeah. books it. Right. And never walked in that lab again. Like that's oh, it. I'm done. Yeah. This, is, this would be evil stuff. You can imagine people thinking this is just pure witchcraft oh evil. So, you know, and, yeah. and he calls it, he says to, for brevity's sake, let's call these x-rays in right. the first paper so he publishes this without pictures like right near christmas no one pays any attention but he right. sends certain copies to different friends including a former student with pictures and one student was having a new year's or christmas party and his friend there was the son of the local newspaper person in vienna i think or right so his friend sees these pictures says, oh my God, <laughs> brings this to his dad and says, 
change the front stop page. The <laughs> stop the presses. Literally stop <laughs> the presses. They didn't have time to include a picture, but they made an article that's like, wow. this is, um, it's the most German article ever written. This is like, this is real German science from a real German scientist. It right. sounds like Jules Verne, but this is right. real Germany. <laughs> <laughs> and by the next day, it's picked up by the London press. And pretty, right. I think I saw something like two days later from like Kansas. Like, oh, wow. Everyone wow. lost their mind because wow. everyone had one of these crux tubes or one of these Hitchworth tubes because Crooks had made it so popular right. that every physicist had one. So they no could reproduce it did. straight away. Right. So you could see it straight away. And like everyone could do it. Supposedly, J.J. Thompson, um, according to Ernest Rutherford or J.J. Thompson. So J.J. Thompson was the head of the Cavendish Laboratory in mm. England. So he said there was a line out the door of rich people <laughs> dragging their doctor to get them an x-ray and right. prove them. They said one person found a like shot, buckshot left in his oh, leg. Oh, wow, and then yeah, yeah. The that his doctor told him was gone and was like screaming at his doctor. Everyone had to leave the room. They're like, okay, I'm not, I'm not part of this. <laughs> Cause that's <laughs> the only way you could get an x-ray <laughs> is by dragging someone to the physics department. And then suddenly everyone is like, oh my God, everyone needs all this stuff. And Edison is like, okay, we should make this a light bulb. Because of course he thought we should make this a light bulb. Edison just, yep. So he's like, okay, we need a better screen because this one is very dim. So he all put right. his muckers, he's like, take every chemical you have and shine stuff on it until you get one that glows. That was and basically then, his approach to everything was try, he had the world's best stocked lab and he just tried everything until something worked. <laughs> yeah, well, he have, he would, he was known for, he did have brilliant ideas. Yeah. But then his solution to solving said idea was always just like, here's a giant haystack, yep. go through. Find, find the needle, yep. Right, yeah. right, but his idea <laughs> was brilliant. Yes. But like his methods was like, I don't know, just, just do it until your mind leaves. And so they did, they made this thing and they would sell it to doctors and to traveling shows. Oh my God, there's this one story. I have to tell you the story. Yeah. So people made a living traveling for carnival shows doing x-rays. Oh, and wow. one man told a story about this young woman came to him and spoke to him very softly on the side yeah. and said, excuse me, sir, I'm about to get married and I'm a little nervous. Would you mind taking a secret x-ray of my fiance and make sure everything works? I'll make sure everything works. <laughs> and he's like, um, um, I'm so sorry, honey. But you gotta pay the fee. You gotta ride the ride to know what it's like. And everything's not premium. <laughs> Actually, ain't gonna do it. And, and I'm sure it'll pass straight through that thing she's interested in anyway. Right, like that doesn't work for that. You can't do secret x-rays. No, 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 no. <sighs> Actually, this is fascinating. So there was a Serbian engineer named Michael Pupin. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name right. And he was working and someone came in who was shot and and he's like, well, if you hold up Edison's phosphorescent screen, it takes an hour. And if you right. use a film, it takes an hour. So he's like, what if I put the screen on the film? And then when he did that, it went to an x-ray in, you know, a couple minutes. Mm. Yep. So it was actually Pupin who made the medical ah. x-ray. Because ah, really, you if you have to lie still for an hour, yep. a medical x-ray is not. <laughs> no, it's not. I, I was going to ask, like, how do they, they do that at the carnival show? How do you make a carnival show out of that if it takes so long to process the image? How do they build a show oh, they, out of they that? They wouldn't process the image. They would just have right. a giant screen and you'd stand there for 10 or 20 minutes and suddenly you could see the bones in your hand. Oh, okay. So someone would stand behind the screen. They'd get a volunteer up, would they? And then 
they just so stand maybe. there and they talk about it or whatever. Or right. like they used to have these things in shoe shops, shoe shops, where um they had you could see the x ray of your foot. They yeah. said it was to buy better shoes. Shoes. But really right. it was to get you in the store. Store, and yes, they had of course. These up to the seventies. Like Oh, really? Well, I wow. never saw one, but my mom saw one. She said wow. She said it was her favorite part about going to shoe shopping. <laughs> shoe was shop like, was to get an X-ray your foot. Well, oh and it goodness. was continuous. It would yeah, just yeah. run all the time. And you put your foot in there and you could see your bones wiggling around. And you're like, oh, I want these shoes. And turns wow. out your feet are very, quite impervious to getting foot cancer from X-rays. Oh, so really? The Interesting. people who visited were fine. The shoe oh. salesman leaning <laughs> down... They uh -huh. weren't so fine, but yeah. you know, <laughs> right. history is littered with people. Yes. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, um, Edison did patent a x-ray machine light bulb, which was the worst idea ever. <laughs> but then he started getting injured by x-rays and his uh, assistant right. actually died from it, oh. which is one thing that they blame Edison for, which he was actually not guilty in any way. Like, mm. there's a lot of bad things Edison did. <laughs> this was a really good thing. Edison had patents for this. Edison had all these ways to make money. And he's like, no, x-rays are dangerous as hell. Also, radium, stay away from it. That stuff scares the hell out of me. And no one listened because it looks so cool. Ah, but like, yeah. there's lots of reasons to be mad at Edison. This wasn't one of them. This was him doing the right thing. Like his assistant wow. got injured and he's like, you should quit. And his assistant's like, no, I'm fine. I'll use my other arm. It was like, oh. it was like that part of Monty Python. Oh. Like it's only yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's yeah like, the arm just chopped off. And the... Honest to God, he just like loses body parts. And he's yeah. like, it's fine. And this is like, I don't think it's fine, man. <laughs> That's and all right, because hardly anyone it. lived past 40 back then anyway. So, you know. Right, what's but the... also Edison, who was really cheap, he paid for all his medical bills. He's like, mm. you're a hero to science. He publishes his name. Wow. He, he, like, tried to do the right thing. And yeah. it really makes me mad when people are so black and white. They're like, well, mm. I hate this person for this. So I will not yeah. acknowledge anything good yep. they do otherwise. I, yeah, I, I get it all the time. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, <laughs> Philip Leonard was a freaking Nazi. He was a yeah. Nazi. There's, like, it's not, it's not a euphemism if you publish an article during, like, the 1930s saying, yeah, like, no, 1920s. He was really early fan. And, but still, he did some great science. Like, I can say both things. It's okay. It <laughs> yeah. Me. Anyway, so, um, but, but, so he killed the x-ray light bulb but other people had the idea oh my gosh instead of using a phosphorescent thing for an x-ray why don't we use it for these geisler tubes or these you know the things with the mercury in it hmm. we'll put phosphorescence on the outside and then we'll have a fluorescence tube and then yeah. it took a lot of time to figure out the ballast i think it's called but that took a little while but right. that's it. It kind of came from medicine, sort of, maybe. When when did they realize that putting that boil that putting a heater inside the tube and boiling off the cathode was a thing? Oh, that was Do much you know? later. See, yeah. J.J. Thompson was like, "What the hell is going on with the cathode ray tube? I don't get it." Like, on one hand, you can move it with a magnet. Someone in France had named Perrin had figured out if you divert the beam into a Faraday something, um, it's a negatively charged something. Yeah. Okay, so it's negatively charged, but it's not moved by plates. What's going on? He's like, there must be something wrong with the plate experiment. There must yes. be something wrong. He's like, maybe it has something to do with not being a good vacuum. Let's mm -hmm. up the power of the cathode ray too. He uh -huh. didn't think of heating it though. What right. he thought of, was making the anode into a donut. He made oh, the positive charge into okay. a ring with a hole in it. And then when he did that, he could make it a better vacuum. And then he figured out that the air in there was acting like a Faraday cage and protecting it from moving 
by the plate. Ah, right. And yes. that was the problem with the plate experiment. Got and it. So, yes, because we all know that CRTs work with magnetic or electric deflection as well. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. it didn't if there's a little bit of air in there because the air it, acts it, like it, it gets right. ionized and it acts like a conductor uh -huh. and it, it protects it under that high voltage. Got it. Gotcha. So once they move the air, he had it going through this, it could move by plate. And so what he did was he made an electromagnetic gauntlet. He's like, okay, oh. I got magnets one direction. I'll put yeah. plates the other direction and make it so it goes straight. And because the electric force, the magnetic force depends on the speed and the electric force doesn't, I can figure out how fast this is going that way. Uh -huh. right. And he figures out it goes about a third of the speed of light. Mm -hmm. He's like, that's fast. And then he says, okay, I'm going to remove one of these forces. I think he removes the magnetic. And he says, so the weight is obviously tiny, but the electric force is still pretty strong. Yeah. He says, it, it's going to fall down like a bullet fired off of a horizontal gun. I know how fast it's going. I know how far it falls. I know how far it went. I can figure out the force on it because I can figure out the acceleration, right? And he yep. figures out that the charge... And he also, someone else had done experiments that seemed wow. like the charge was the same as a positive ion. I mean, same value as a positive hydrogen ion. Ooh. Yeah, positive hydrogen ion, a positive anything ion, like a single ion. Right. So he's like, okay, the charge is like this. If that's true, then the mass is tiny, 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 like 4,000 times smaller than the hydrogen and hydrogen is tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. And he does it with a whole bunch of different materials in the anode, and they all give the same result. Tiny. He's like, everything is full of these, and I don't know how to pronounce it because everyone complained. Corpuscles? Corpuscles? Corp corpuscle. Corpuscle? That just well, that's how I've heard it. No, 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 no. That's I, how I, I remember it. I trust you 100%. I just, it just sounds Don't, so Do not trust me on, on pronunciation of anything. No, <laughs> God of the rule. two of us, you are going to win because I have an audio processing issue where I can't remember how things are pronounced unless I hear it a bazillion times. Right. And so like, I just know how it's written and it's not written like that. It really makes me mad. That's why I get right. German words wrong all the time. Because like... <laughs> Cool not answer. pronounced the way I'm expecting it to be pronounced with those letters that way. <laughs> like, damn it. I'm still trying to get the W's right. Um, but anyway, so he calls them, they're almost quickly called electrons. Thank God. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, they're called electrons. Yes. He's like, they're in everything like a plum pudding. And then his former student, Ernest Rutherford. And then there's the whole story about the nucleus and the uh, yep, yep. core model and all that jazz. Yeah, so um, they, that's what they did with cathode ray tubes before the television. Wow. <laughs> this, Isn't that cool? That's insane. You could have a whole book on just how the cathode ray tube was developed. Oh, yeah. Like, the, seriously. Uh, the, uh, my book that I'm in theory working on, I haven't done, I think I've written two pages, is on... <laughs> It's called the radium revolution, how Einstein, like, Einstein's equals MC squared and Curie's radium changed our world. And it, the first third is the cathode ray tube. Uh, right. Okay. Awesome. Great. Because you can't talk about radium unless you talk about the X-ray because uranium was discovered mm. because this Frenchman, oh, I have to tell you this. Yeah. I'll tell you this uh -huh. another Please. Okay, so there's this guy named Becquerel and in France. And yep. Becquerel and his father were obsessed with fluorescence and phosphorescence, things. And so when he heard about the X-ray, he's like, maybe it has something to do with fluorescence and phosphorescence, hmm. right? Because yep. they glow inside the cathode ray tube and X-ray, maybe it has something to do with that. So he takes out um, uranium, phosphorescent uranium just because randomly he had some 
There was nothing special right. about the arena. And he puts it outside in the sun over a covered piece of photographic plate. And mm -hmm. then he, after two days, he takes it in, he develops the film, and lo and behold, there's a glowing object there. Mm -hmm. He publishes it like the next day. Physicists used to have guts back in the day. Now they are spineless cowards. Did I say that out loud? Yes. <laughs> yes. Academics. She's calling you out. <laughs> Academia. You guys are spineless. Spineless. Oh, oh no. Publish and be damned. Publish and be damned. Publish and be damned. Yes. Oh my God. What if someone takes it? Yes. That's good. Get yeah. off your thing. Do something. I'm. Yeah. That's and how I started. I always say that is my attitude to how I got started in this publish and be damned because I uploaded my first video quickly. I <laughs> talked about this before upload, and it's awful. It's horrible. It's the worst thing I've ever produced. I thought it was embarrassing, but I went, you know, yeah. publish and be damned. So I published it and, and I, and this is now my job. Right. <laughs> publish now, and be I mean, damned. Yep. I, you've seen my video. I'm still proud of my first one. It, yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. So am I. I'm, I'm, I'm. Well, I'm more proud that I actually released it, right, that I right, had the right. guts to release it, than the actual quality of it, right? But for me, yeah, I am pleased with it because I had already started writing my book for a year before I started my video. <sighs> so the I had put in so much intellectual work into it that it had a lot of substance. But I don't make it perfect before I publish it. Sometimes no, I have a, like an hour long video or two, an hour. Yeah. It's long. It takes me months, yep. but I am not an obsessive perfectionist. I am mm -hmm. just like, it needs to be good. Yes. And then it just I needs to be out. good enough. Publish and then go on to the right. next thing. But yep. if you kind of something good, you publish it the next day. Yes. If you can publish it the next day. Yeah. You put it out when it is and you say <laughs> what you want to do with it. So if someone else sees it, they can do it first. Exactly. Because the whole point yeah. is to get other people to do things. Mm. Making this whole video on the poetic kindness of physics versus the dull cruelty of pseudoscience. And the whole thing is, please do something with my, please do something with my goddamn work. Please, 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 do something. Talk to me. Tell me I'm wrong. Argue with me. Make a video. Do something. And yes. everyone's like, you're the greatest. And I'm like, great. Thanks for that. But do something, follow it up. Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly. But I can't do it alone. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Anyway, oh, boy. it's all um, very familiar. So, Please oh continue. My God. So what was I saying? Oh, so he publishes this. Then it's cloudy. Mm -hmm. And he was going to do something about this. Uranium had to be prepared. And then it lost its phosphorescence. It was a special kind of thing. So he prepared it, but there's no sunlight. So he just put it in a drawer. And then two days later, it wasn't as phosphorescent anymore and it was still cloudy. So he's like, fine, I'll just develop the film. It'll be like a prove that it's the sunlight working, right? You yeah. know, baseline. And it was just as bright as the one he had had mm -hmm. in sunlight. It wasn't the sunlight, it was the yep. uranium. It was the uranium ore, yep. Yeah. No, pure uranium wasn't oh, uranium. Oh, pure. Oh, okay. It was right. It was. It was actually pure uranium. Refined. Okay. And because it was this phosphorescent, so he publishes this, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, I found a new kind of X-ray, uh, <laughs> right. uranium rays." Uranium and, rays. Right, uranium <laughs> rays, and he does a few That's experiments, right. including proving that uranium makes the air electrified a tiny bit, oh. and then, and then he drops it because they're nowhere near as good as x-rays. Like x-rays, a uranium ray of your hand takes forever and you can't see any, it's just your hand is just a mush. So he's like, okay, well, that's kind of cool, but on I go doing something else. <laughs> Meanwhile, Marie Sklodowska Curie has her baby and her first baby and her husband had finished his PhD. And Pierre was like, it's your turn your turn get your phd <laughs> and she's like but i have a baby he's like my dad's gonna move in with us and take care of the baby, <laughs> baby. and his dad was like um an OBGYN who helped 
deliver the baby. Oh, they were okay, very close right. family. Huh. And I don't know where the mom was. And her mom had died many, many years ago. And her dad mm -hmm. was in Poland. And she was like, okay, here we go. I'm going to do something great. What? <laughs> So she's like, what <laughs> well, that's the same with every PhD person, right? right. What the heck the am I going to do? Yeah. She couldn't get an advisor to give her advice. No. She had to come up with something on her own right. and come up to someone and say, I have this great idea. Put your name to it. I'll do everything. You just get the credit, which is exactly what she did. So she looks and she finds the uranium rays and she's like, huh, Pierre and his brother had discovered the piezoelectric effect. Ah. So electricity could change the pressure yeah. and the pressure could change the electricity. electricity. And yeah. he had made this little device that was like a scale, which could determine incredibly small amounts of electricity because it would change the, the electricity, put a battery, you know, battery over yeah. the gap. And if it, the air was a little bit electrified, it would change the piezo thing and it would tilt it a little bit and then you put the weight Ooh, on the other side. Wow. Wow. And you can measure incredibly small amount of electricity. So hmm. she's like, okay, why don't I use that and study uranium? So she gets the uranium and she's doing all these chemical things. Am I crushing? Am I heating it? Blah, blah, blah. Whatever she does, she gets the same amount of radiation, which is a term she came up with because it was all the same. And she's like, okay, if this is a property of uranium, other things must have this property. Yes. So she starts looking around. She finds something else, but before she can publish, someone else says, oh, I got extra uranium rays. Now they're calling them Becquerel rays with this yes. thing. And she's like, okay, I'll just publish how radioactive it is compared to uranium because she has the scale. And she says, this thing is about as radioactive as uranium, which is, ah. like I said, the term she came up with. Yes. So this she published this. Her husband's like, this is the best thing ever. I'm quitting my job. We're just going to work <laughs> together. So we, they c collect everything. Nothing, 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 a whole bunch of nothing until they get some uranium ore. Now, uranium ore is a mixture of all sorts of things. Yeah, it's got. So they put it in there, and it's way more radioactive than pure uranium. Oh. Okay. Way. Can you make a guess? Oh, but, well, I did, I'm not a physicist, but has it, does it have different um, isotope things in it or something? The, the ore? Different that, am I close? elements in it. It's got right. different secret elements in it. Not just uranium, but other things. So what they do is they take the uranium ore, they get like truckloads of uranium ore. <laughs> they crush it up, crush they do it all up. sorts of weird chemical experiments, and they're yeah. like, is it more radioactive or less? Is it more or less? More or less? Right. That's all they do. And they discover something, which I think it's called. Um, she called polonium, or it's not plutonium. It was named after her home country of Poland that's very radioactive, but there's something else that's so radioactive that they call it radium. And the radium, once you distill it, it starts glowing green all the time and heating mm -hmm. all the time. She describes like how romantic it was to work in this <laughs> laboratory with these glowing green lights. Green glow, and I'm like, yeah. oh my God, please uh. stop. And then her husband starts putting it on his body as a way of testing the yeah. medical things of it. And it's yeah. just like, oh my God, just reading about it. I'm yep. Just like, yep. It's like a horror movie <laughs> in the middle of a romance. And it's so <laughs> awful. <laughs> Oh goodness! <laughs> oh my God! So yeah, the, and then and then I can go on and on and on. I swear, uh, problem. <laughs> so radium, yes, because she discovered. Yeah, ra she got the no Did she get the no one of her Nobel prizes in? Was it chemistry for radium? The so the first one because she got two. She won in two different fields, right? Right. So what happened was the Nobel Committee decided to give half an award to Becquerel and half award for Pierre Curie for uranium rays, uh, sorry, Becquerel rays, rays. and radiation. Right. And Pierre is like, F you. No, uh, 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 uh. 
This was my wife. This was my wife's job. Oh, I he, he gave it to her? No, he split he, it. What? Oh, he split it with her. Oh, okay. no, he, oh is that she? Oh, huh? Now, he couldn't give it to her. So You're what right. he said was, I will not accept it without her. So oh, what they okay. did was, they split it. it in two. She got a fourth of a Nobel Prize. A fourth of a Nobel Prize. She got a fourth of a Nobel Prize. And Becquerel got a half. <laughs> it's the weirdest split I didn't know that was the case. Okay. Because wow. he was just like, no, we'll just reject it. We won't take it. I'm not accepting this without his wife. He wow. was... He was a real, and his love letters to his wife, he was so poetic and so, and so bright, my God, but also just like, <laughs> I'm just going to let my wife shine as well, is amazing. He was just amazing. Um, there's a romance book, in, there's a romance book in this for the female uh, audience there is out there. so much romance. Just saying. It's because just saying. anyone who will put up with a physicist has to be an extraordinary, <laughs> extraordinary person. It really, seriously, like over and over and over again, there are extraordinary love stories because like, I know that about my husband. In order to put up with me, you have to be extraordinary. Everyone's like, oh, you must be lovely. You must be so much fun. It's like, yeah, and I forget everything. And I'm half in this world and I'm half in the last world. And I accidentally, you know, oh god, you know, broke everything. Yeah. I forgot this was. I forgot the birthday. Yeah, you, <laughs> you have to be extraordinary to put up with us. I think it's true with engineers too. Yeah, like, yeah, very. Our spouses, but... our children are always just extraordinary because they put up with us. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm saying that there's a uh, <clears throat> huge market there. I'm saying the female market of uh, love, uh, you know, Mills and Boone type romance novels. Oh God, if, if, if it worked for Fifty Shades of Grey or something, whatever it is, you know, it's like. It's a lot nicer than Fifty Shades of Grey. A lot nicer. What I'm nicer. telling you, they're, they're, there's millions to be had. There's millions to be had here. Physics I'm romance letters or just. If I was words. you, I would pivot. I would pivot to from the physics books to the romance books. The romance I'm just books. saying. The Physics I'm romance. So... I'm putting this in some really small letters. Physics romance. <laughs> oh no. I, I am not joking. This is I, that could be a huge market. I, I, I it just drives me nuts that everyone thinks we're so dull and we're so <laughs> I mean, certainly there are plenty oh. of dull people right? in the world. There are plenty of dull engineers. There's plenty of dull physicists. I've met oh, them. Oh boy! But they tend not to be great. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yep. you meet a great yep. engineer, when you meet a great they're physicist, weird. Yeah, they they're outcasts. They're but yep. out, we're artists, and because we're artists, we are quirky and weird and annoying and smelly <laughs> yeah, no. and fascinating. We're always this like that. That's what we're this is like. Great. Not all oh of us God. are smelly. I'm smelly. Uh. I'm, I'm not <laughs> making judgments on you. I'm sure that there were physicists who smelled delightful. Um, I mean, you know, I bathe regularly. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is way too personal. <laughs> I, I, I will get you out of this. Did we did we finish off the wheat field thing? Because I oh, I lost track. Did we did did we tie in the wheat field thing? Oh, oh right, right. So it tells us uh, the the wheat field. He's has the wheat television. field. Did we tie that in, or did we tangent and just keep tangenting until we infinity? Keep tangenting. We keep tangenting. We. That's what I thought. That's I thought it wasn't tied up. Can we okay, tie that up, up, please? Before Let me we go, tie it up. let's I'll go. Try, okay. Okay. How much time do I? Have? Like five minutes? Oh, like, yeah, five minutes. Let's tie it up in five okay. minutes. Okay, tie up five minutes. So he does nothing with it because he's a high school kid. And then he gets a job, um, joins the army. He quits the army. He gets a job working for some people and he impresses the hell out of them by fixing their car. And he says, they're like, what are you up to, young man? And he's like, well, I have an idea for an electric television. And they said, well, we have some money so for some damn fool idea. This seems like a damn fool idea. Have some money. So he marries his girlfriend. He moves in with his girlfriend and his brother-in-law to LA 
and starts trying to make a television by themselves, like so, learning how to solder and learning how to do yeah, it yeah. all themselves in some with the people who financed it. And they're like, get met by police. Like, are you an anarchist making a bomb? Like, <laughs> no, we're making a television. Television. What's a television? Right. Exactly. Exactly. And they're failing and failing and failing and they run out of money. So they go, the backers go all over the place. They end up going to San Francisco. They get some money from a banker there. So they moved to San Francisco back when you could do that. And <laughs> back so when they, you wanted to move to San Francisco. Oh, I love San Francisco. <laughs> I love San Francisco. San Francisco is the best, the most beautiful town. And it is the most expensive town. <laughs> like, oh my God, it is so expensive. Yeah. And yeah, and it, yeah, exactly. And, but anything, yeah, I love I know. San Francisco. I'm, I'm from Sydney. I know. <laughs> right, exactly. You're like, I love this and hate this at the same time. Like, everything yeah. simultaneously but anyway yeah. so they're building this television and their backer is just complaining 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 finally they get it to work and they get it to work with this tiny screen it must have been like two inches by two inches right and the lights have to be so bright you can't show a person the first one you could just show an image so they had a little rectangular bar that they could move and you could see the rectangular bar move on the other side. And one of them figured out that you could blow smoke over the image and you could see the smoke, smoke. on the ah. other side. So they send a telegram to the, one of their original backers, like the damn thing works. So they get the back <laughs> banker to them and they're yeah. like, they're, we're going to show you a demonstration, right? And the yeah. banker says what he always said, which is, when am I going to see some damn cash out of your machine, Farnsworth? <laughs> yeah, I know. How do so we sell turns, this widget? Come on. <laughs> right. So he turns it on and shows, shows an image of a dollar sign. Ah, nice. 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 And that's the first television. That's how television was born. Wow. The first television image was a dollar sign. The square and then an official dollar sign. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then his wife became the first television star. He ah, would film her. And right. with like this heavy makeup to protect her from the sunlight. I was going to say, the light is so bright, yeah. That, and, uh, wow. and she would just like move. <laughs> <laughs> move and... <laughs> it wasn't the star. I mean, they just did that. Yeah, and then there was right. a whole thing of like the whole thing of how the television thing and... It was very complicated, but yeah. That's did what did they end up refining it into anything better or did they just go into obscurity? Yes. What happened was he got a job with a company called um, um, Philco, which he thought was Oh, funny. Philco. Ah, yes. And that was yeah. based in Philadelphia and they yes. were horrible. Horrible. They, they, they made the first op amp. Uh, Bob, uh, for my audience, Bob uh, Pease it famously worked for Philco, I believe, back in the early day, developing op amps. So, oh my anyway, well, fa in famous the Bob Pease. very Pease. beginning, yeah. they sucked. Yeah, they right. They totally sucked. Made right. every engineer work in a suit and tie, all right. which is what made me think of all those things. Ah. Wouldn't let his wife help, even though she knew everything about how to do it because she learned with him. Nope, ah. she can't do it. She had a horrible allergy. She was miserable. Their child died and they wouldn't let him take time off to go to the funeral. I mean, it was horrific. Ooh. And right. meanwhile, the um, uh, in New York, uh, RCA was working on it with a guy yes. named Vladimir Zworkin. And Vladimir Zworkin made the oscilloscope as a precursor to the television yes which is what we use to make study radar and uh, no, no, no. It's like it, it, everything i think connected. that was his first use wasn't it was a radar type thing well, i don't know if, if it was actually as an as an oscilloscope but I, anyway. it was sold as something right. <laughs> because it, yeah, when yeah. they used it for radar they had they could just pick up one of these devices yeah, so yeah. I think it was sold as oh, okay. It would have oh, okay. Yeah, it would have. And yeah. then they're like, okay. Someone read a report that you could take down planes with radio, and they're like, is it possible? And they're like, nope, no, it really isn't. But maybe you could see where the plane see? was. Yeah, and that, that's that could be useful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Actually, 
they snuck in and put a secret little piece of metal, um, like, like um, little metal pieces on the back of the plane to make sure the radar would work. Oh, okay. Right. They cheated. <laughs> and they cheated. <laughs> Nice. But it turned out you didn't need to do that. You but didn't need to, like, exactly. just in case, right. we're gonna put. <laughs> we're gonna uh, fake terrific. this. Right, fake it. Have a uh, transmitter there. That did you transmit? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Smoke exactly. and mirrors demo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. that's this is great. This is great. Oh, unfortunately, our empower is up. <laughs> I told you, I told you. I know, I know, I know, but we do like to keep it to an hour these days. No, I'm really we pleased. Tried. I'm, thank you. I said it's your That's job, right. it's not my I job. Had, I had no idea where this would go. I, I had no question. It just, and we ended up uh, the entire history of CRT development. And, 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 and we tied it off with Bob Pease. Oh, my goodness. Yay. And, um, hey, Bob P. want to talk to me? <laughs> no. Unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah no, Bob Pease. He, um, yeah, uh, like five, oh God, how long ago? Five, seven years ago, um, mm. tragically died in a car accident on his way back from the funeral of, um, oh, oh who was God. it? Another one of his mates, another famous electronics guy. That's, that's not right. Yeah, no, it's not right. And ironically, he wrote a book on driving safely. I, I tell you, sorry, I can't make, I, I don't make this up. It just like, I tell yep. you, yeah. science history is always the most dramatic, the most yeah. tragic, the most romantic, it's, the most surreal ever. And the most coincidental and the, and most, the most coincidental, coincidental. Yeah, everything, like, no, everything. No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Like and they're, it's all tied together. Yeah. That's what our last episode was about, was about how they're all intertwined. Like people think, you know, like Hertz invented this and, you know, Maxwell invented this in their own little chamber. No, they're all intertwined. All interacting all of them. and talking. So if physicists don't yeah. say what they're doing, nothing yep. gets developed and uh, no. engineers are talking. Who yeah. Yeah, them? exactly. Yep. Yep. It's. <laughs> Thank you very much, Kathy. When's the next book coming out? Oh God. Oh, Who yeah, knows? Right. Oh, okay. Is it is it actually Do complete? Do not hold your breath. Is is it complete though? Oh God, no. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, not at all. It's it's right. mentally complete, maybe. Right. Uh, okay. But that don't mean anything. Yeah, I'm Got in it. this okay. big thing. I'm trying to fight pseudoscience online. Oh, Cause I'm so sick. I, I came up with this thing called the box mac and cheese method. Can I just tell you this tiny? I know yes, we're talking. Please. Okay, finish it. Okay, up. you know if someone shows you a picture of like commercial for mac and macaroni and cheese with the box and the bowl, and they say, and then they show you a bowl of pasta from fine dining, right? And they say, which one of these is fine dining? Anyone would know which one is fine dining, right? Right. Like fine dining looks pretty and doesn't come with a box, right? <laughs> right. Yes. And obviously, obviously. So in my mind, there's tricks for the different kind of pseudoscience that's commonly out there to help people go instead of knowing the rules, know mm -hmm. like, okay, if someone discovers some new experiment, they're going to tell you how it works because other people need to copy it. And it doesn't really matter what their theory is, because even if your experiment works, your theory isn't necessarily true. It's just a good right. guess, right? right? So if someone says, I saw this great video where I charged my phone, well, someone charged their phone with an actual apple, with a bite. Yeah, right, okay, yes. Which <laughs> someone sent to me and said, is this real, this looks real. really good. Yeah. You could say, okay, look, <laughs> do they explain how the experiment works? <laughs> and even if they do, that doesn't necessarily mean that the apple is what's trying to, you know. Right. It's generated enough voltage to turn on the charge detection thing in the phone, which then shows Maybe, that it's charging, but, but it's not getting any energy. what it has is a secret battery in there because. Or, or, no or, they've, or, they've, or, they've, or they've. All these people yeah. are scam artists. Have you scam ever seen us. the Electroboom video? Oh, where... yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I've oh, done, I've uh, done debunking oh. videos of, of scams like this. 
Right, right, but it's exhausting. Yep. It's exhausting. I know. I, I, it's well, it's the old saying that it, it's an you need to expend an order of magnitude more energy to debunk something, that, to debunk bullshit, than to actually produce the bullshit in the first place. It's right, and they're scam yeah. artists for so long. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some of them things. aren't though. Some of them are just think that they've cracked free energy, you know, and like they they just think they've cracked it, right? I and think the people like... with an experiment are all scam artists because you right. need to hide a battery in there. You need well, no to... one. No, one I debunked once, which was an over unity free energy thing. Uh -huh. uh, the guy just didn't do the, he, he produced this circuit, which apparently, you know, with magnets, it, it actually produced more energy out than it put in. It like leads would come on for a certain amount of time. He just didn't do the measurements properly. He didn't account oh. for all these other losses and stuff. And, and it's just like, yeah, he just like, like it, it, it certainly wasn't a scam. It wasn't a scam. He just made engineering mistakes and in right. the measurements and he just didn't account for things and i did a whole right, video right. explaining you didn't account for this 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 and when you add them all up there's your hundred percent there's you know, your thing like, but yeah, you were yeah. trying you were yep. trying but like yep. yeah yeah, yeah you, you just had. but i know there's so many scams out there you can't even count them oh so, it's exhausting yeah. so i'm trying to do something about that and we'll see if I can help at all. All right, please join the debunking community. There's not many of us out there. There's only a handful. There's barely even a handful of us uh, debunkers out there on the uh, doing I'm, debunking I'm videos. trying to be a grand debunker. We'll see awesome. what I can do. Awesome, we need it. Thank you very much, Kathy. <laughs> Where can people uh, follow you? Obviously I'll link your book and your website down below. You've got the audio book, right? As well. No, I haven't done it yet. I've, oh, I, I thought a, that was done. Oh, I thought I was a no, given. No, no, no. I'm was doing done. a um, GoFundMe for it. Yeah, I thought that. Slowly, thank goodness, because I'm oh, okay. so busy. Right. <laughs> Got it. Okay. <laughs> right. But take your time. If you All feel right. like giving me money for it, that's lovely. But like, yep. <laughs> I'm busy. It's fine. Anyway. Anyway, the book is fantastic. Highly recommended. The uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. lightning table. You can tables. get it from the library. You can get it from Amazon. Um, I yep. have a Kindle. Website. I've got the kid. Yep www.kathylovesphysics.com and that one has my scripts for my videos so you can read it with and you've links. got a patreon as well i've got a patreon yep and i think that is it i've given up on everything else because so you don't I, have I, the uh twitters you don't have i don't have the, the xxx i don't have the <laughs> um uh you I've, like I think my Facebook page, I did something two years ago. Yeah, just abandoned <laughs> it's it. Like, Same as me. I will talk to you later. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I don't do anything but YouTube and my website. And Awesome. Stick to it. that. Yep. Your yep. life will be much better. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Honest to God, I'm awesome. too easily distracted already. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Kathy. We'll definitely get you back on because like we can, all we need is just one little seed and boom, and we're off for an hour on some other new, new tangent honestly, topic. It's great. Let's make this our November, October. That way you will <laughs> yes, no we'll do it at least be yearly. about yes. Halloween. You'll be right. like, at least one American doesn't piss me off on Halloween. <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much, Kathy. <laughs> all right. Catch you next time.